Hi there, and welcome to another video by Omnisrez. This video is accompanying the post half-baked analysis using Proteomics DB to analyze the human proteome. So just go to our website, omnisrez.com, go to our work, and just scroll down to that post and check it out. Okay, so this post is covering how to use the Proteomics DB API, how to parse the resulting XML format, and then put it in a user-friendly form. So what is Proteomics DB? So Proteomics DB had a nature publication last year. It's a fairly new resource. Basically, they, they took thousands of mass spec data sets, some of them their own, but others publicly available. And they sort of reanalyzed all the data using um, consistent metrics. And then they made this great server where you can download um, the data of interest. So the, the problem, though, is there isn't really a button to click on to just download the data. You have to use the API. And the API um, currently has um, 10, 10 possibilities. So I know how to use the API because I'm currently working on a project involving novel non-coding RNAs. And one issue of finding novel non-coding RNAs is when you find a new RNA no one has ever seen before, how do you know it's actually non-coding? Chances are it has an open reading frame. So what I did is I, I downloaded every single peptide sequence from ProteomicsDB, and then you can check the open reading frames of these novel non-coding RNAs and see if you find any of those peptides in your open reading frame. And that's just one of various metrics to test if a nov if a new RNA is actually non-coding. Okay, so when I was learning how to use the API, um, I you have to, first of all, you have to register with them. You have to have an account. So here we have almost 500 registered users. I'm not sure if they all know how to use the API because it's a little bit complicated. Um, but uh, I emailed ProteomicsDB, um, and they, they helped me. They're very, very responsive, and they helped me get set up with, with the code. Okay, and of course, the code is in Python, as is everything else. Um, you just need to import these, these two Python modules. They should come installed with, with Python. Um, we'll go over the rest of this code in a bit, but um, here's really, here's all you need um, to use the API. So you're going to need your username and your password. I have a username and password, which I'll type in off screen. But um, you're going to need to sign up and type in your credentials there. So the only other thing you may change is this line right here. So where does that line come from? That line comes from, I lost the API. There it is. OK, so that line, that's, that's this right here. So when they give you these examples, so we're using number example 9. Um, the peptides and their modifications, because we're interested in protein modifications in this video. So we are using that example there. And I have a variable here, but basically what you need to do is you need the uniprot ID. So here's a, here's a FASTA file, and this would be the uniprot ID. Um, this uh, database, ProteomicsDB, is in Europe, and Uniprot is also um, from Europe. Um, so coincidence, coincidence? I think I think not. But uh, actually, Uniprot, um, there is a valid reason for using Uniprot identifiers over NCBI identifiers. So Uniprot, they only have one identifier per protein, so you'll just get one sequence per protein. But NCBI... RefSeq transcripts, you might have 20 or more transcripts, so then how would you know which one to use? So at least uh, with Uniprot, for each protein, there's one name, one identifier, one sequence, so it's a little bit a little bit simpler. Okay, so for the code I'm going to be showing you and which is going to be available at omnisres.com, you're basically just going to give it a FASTA file like this, and it's going to have the Uniprot identifier of your protein of interest, and then the, the sequence. And you can give it as many um, FASTA sequences as you want. So if you want to give it every single FASTA 
so these are human. This this database is only for humans. So um, give it thirty thousand, give it as many as you want, and you'll get all the modifications. Okay, so the first thing that uh, our file does here is it just um, it just parses the FASTA file. Pretty simple parser, and uh, makes a dictionary with the Uniprot name equaling to the sequence. Okay, so then what we do here is I, I make a list, which is going to collect all the data from the loop. And we have a loop that's going to go through our dictionary. And I have uh, another another dictionary here, which we'll use later, and another dictionary, which we'll use later. Um, but you're just going to go through the names in your Unipro dictionary, which is the names from the FASTA file. It's going to put that name into this API call. This is this is the money shot right here. So you got body equals response dot read. That's where we get the data. And the thing is, uh, bodies in this definition. So I had to call a global body to be able to access it. So actually, let's go ahead and let's take a look and see see what that looks like. So when you when you call this with your correct credentials, you'll get this 200 OK response if everything was fine. Um, sometimes, you know, um, I'll get uh, errors, even though I don't have errors in my code. But you'll also get errors if you have errors in your code. So I'm not sure um, what the issue is sometimes with that. But let's just go ahead and see what we're looking with. So I'm going to print body. It's a long string, so I'm just going to print a little bit of it. Yeah, so it's XML, which is completely incomprehensible, basically. But luckily, there are parsers built to handle um, XML. So Python has a built-in parser. It has this thing called mini DOM. So we're going to be using that. And we're just going to set x equal to mini dom dot parse string body because body is a string. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, tag properties, which you can find if you look through the XML close enough. And that will get you an element. And then within that element, there'll be more tags. There'll be these nodes. And basically, I'm just grabbing the sequence and the modification, the peptide sequence and the modification. In this case, I'm only interested in elements that had phospho in them. So actually, and all these are getting saved in this list called modifications. So let's, let's go ahead and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so I all these have to include phospho because that's what I requested. But you'll notice that sometimes you have other modifications as well, such as oxidation. And at ProteomicsDB, um, there's even more modifications. There's um, ubiquitination, which actually would be denoted by glycine glycine. Um, let's see. There's a couple. There's a couple other ones you can you can look through. There's acetylation. Um, I'm not sure what that signifies, um, but there's a couple that may be of interest to you. Okay, but as you'll notice, is that you see a lot of the peptide. A lot of the same peptide multiple times, and we don't want we don't want that. So, what do we do about that? So we we look through these modifications, and um, we we grab we we split we split over here by the semicolon, and we only want the phospho one, so we want to ignore all, all the oxidations. And we want to only get unique ones. So I use that um, dictionary, which I instantiated earlier. So a dictionary will only give you um, unique entries because it'll just keep overriding the previous uh, key I had before. So let's go ahead. Let's look at that dictionary, actually. So we went from this data to to this. So this is a little bit more readable. So you have your, your peptide. Um, then it tells you the modification, in this case, serine 16.
but uh, we're, we're kind of interested in the position in the original protein sequence and not the position in this uh, random peptide. So what I did is I have the sequence from the FASTA file. And to get the final position, you're going to need the position in this peptide. And then you're going to need the, the position that the peptide is in in the original protein. Then you have to add those two things together. And then um, I only want unique, unique modifications. So I have another dictionary which um, checks to see if I've seen the modification already. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and we can see what that looks like. Um, and it gets appended into this list up here, which is before the loop. So if your FASTA had more than one protein, the loop won't get overwritten. The, the list won't get overwritten by, by the loop. So for I in all data. And that will get saved into a file like this. And it'll have your protein name and then the modification. OK, so that's basically how to get all the phosphorylations. If you wanted a different modification, really all you should have to do is change phospho to your modification of interest. And then this code should work for that as well. OK, well, thank you. And please check out onesres.com. And the code will be available there.